Shalom and welcome. My name is Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira, and I'm the founder of Avatami Ministries and Shuvu.tv. We'd like to wish you on behalf of our ministry, Chag Sameach, as we continue to study about this magnificent messianic feast, festival, holiday called Sukkot. We already learned that one of the names of the Sukkot is the name of the festival of the ingathering, or in Hebrew, Chag Aasif. I would like to continue for a moment and show you who is this gathering and what's the purpose behind this gathering, specifically as it's related to the nations. In Isaiah 1, chapter 11, we saw that God says that He will gather not the first but the second time His people to Him and the nations will be there and He, the Messiah of Israel, will be called Nes Lamim, which literally means a miracle to the nations. So today I would like to answer one question with you in this brief lesson. What is this great and awesome miracle to the nation? What is this miracle to the nation? Nesla Amin. In order to answer this question, I want us to go to another, yet another mes greatly messianic passage from the book of Isaiah in the 66th chapter. And we read there in Isaiah 66, and I will start in verse 18, and again, I will jump back and forth with the Hebrew and in the English, and it says, For I know the works and their thoughts. And then it says, It's used the word kibbutz. It's interesting, the word kibbutz, you know, that's a, a, a community where people gather together, agricultural community, if you ever visited in Israel, you know what a kibbutz is. But the word like kabetz mean together. I want you to make a connection to the word that Yeshua used in Matthew 23 when he says, Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I long to gather you. The word gather, it's the, the word Yeshua uses, the word lekabetz or kibbutz. And here it says, He is going to come lekabetz et kol agohim v'aleshonot. To gather, here you go, here's another camera angle of this great festival of Sukkot. What is he doing? He's coming to gather all the nations and the tongues. And they shall come and they will see my glory. Who will see my glory? The nations will see God's glory. Because he will gather them. He's not rapturing them. He is gathering them. And then it's continuing. It says, I will work ot. Ot is something supernatural in Hebrew. It's not uh, something a man can do. It's not something only God can do. And I will work a sign among them. It means the goim. And I will send them as escape of them unto the nation to Tarshish, full and Lud, to draw a bow and to Baal and Yavan and to the isle afar off. They have not heard my name, neither they have seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations. There is a remnant group of actually believers who will go and proclaim the glory of the Lord to all the world. There will be such a revival in this season that we have ne never seen like that, anything like that in the world. And I want you to pay attention, next two verses are one of the most important verses in understanding end time prophecy. And it's then they show bring all your brethren out of the nations. Why? Because they are grafted in. They are being joining for the offering unto the Lord upon horses and in chariot and litters and upon mules and upon swift beast to my holy mountain, Jerusalem. Remember we saw already in Isaiah 11 that they are all gathering the holy mountain here again. In verse 20, they are all in gathered into the holy mountain in Yerushalayim. Says the Lord, as the children of Israel bring the offering, the clean vessel, into the house of the Lord. And then here is the shocker. Here is verse 20 and 21. And of them also I will take to become Kohanim and Leviim. Says the Lord. Who this verse is talking about when he says of them I will take Kohanim and Leviim. It's clearly not speaking about the children of Israel because they are already called Mamlechet Kohanim, a nation of priests. Who is he talking about when he says Mehem? Who is the Mehem? 
The rabbis speak in one voice of this verse. And they says the mehem are those from the nations who become great tzedek. They become a righteous Gentiles. And what are they going to be doing? They're going to serve in the temple, shockingly. And then it says the new heaven and the new earth will, which I'll make. This is when Messiah Returning, I want to explain this to you, that the reason the Mashiach called Nes Lagoim, because the Goim, as Paul says in Ephesians 2, they were without a hope in the world, without nothing. He has taken them, and through this blood of the Messiah, they will serve in the temple. Friends, I want to tell you today, you don't need to run and do a DNA test. You do not need to run and prove you're Jewish. If you are in Messiah today, you are co heir in the inheritance that is given to the Jewish people. And there will be a time that you, it will be fulfilled. Yeah, the Jewish people will still be have a, a role in the temple. But look at the honor that God is going to give the nations as they're going to serve in the temple. They're going to be a Kohen and Levim. Is that a replacement with theology? No, it is not. It is right there in the Hebrew Bible. What's the implication to us today? There is a nest. If you know Messiah today, you can live with the realization of the promise that he called Neslamim. The miracle starts with you and I today as we walk into this covenant and we are waiting to this fulfillment of the covenant with Jeremiah 31 with the house of Israel yeah Jeremiah 31 has not been fully fulfilled but when he come back Jeremiah 31 will be fully fulfilled to the Jew and to the nation because those from the nation will be part of the house of Israel in this day as you are today so according to this scripture we have much to look forward. I hope that explained to you today why the Lord called the nation. He said he will be called, he, the Messiah will be called Neslami. I wish you Chag Sameach and Koltuv. Literally.